Hi folks, Thomas Henson here with thomasenson.com and today is another episode of Big Data Big Questions, Blockchain Edition. So today I'm going to be covering a topic um, from a user here on uh, YouTube who's asked uh, for me to do a little video around blockchain and kind of, I'm going to put a little spin on it and talk about, you know, why, you know, why for data engineers we need to talk about it, but we need to get a little background. So I've done a little bit of research. It's something I've been following. Not too heavily, but I mean, it's kind of hard to not follow what's going on, right? There's so much on social media, whether it be Twitter or LinkedIn or just, I mean, people in general talking about blockchain. And now I'm going to talk about blockchain. I'm going to try not to say Bitcoin, right? <laughs> so those are those those are similar, but not the same thing, right? Like one, one, is, one is the technology that's driving it and one is, you know, a currency system. So we're going to stick with blockchain and we're going to try to keep keep on uh, task here and I'm going to give you a little bit of information about that find out more about that and then the, some career tips in blockchain right after this so welcome back <clears throat> so before we jump into our kind of little deep dive on blockchain I want to say if you have any questions big data uh, data engineering technology data science related throw them down in the comment section here below i'll answer them here as best i can or you know go to thomasinson.com forward slash big questions if you don't want them to appear in the comment section here let me know i'll answer those also if i get something right if i get something wrong let me know in the comment section here below i love the feedback i love the interaction with the community here make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode and now for today's question so today's question comes in from a youtube user i'm going to read it here you can read it uh, as it comes on the screen says, hey Thomas, do make some videos about blockchain and a little bit about the careers that are available in blockchain. So I want to talk a little bit before we jump into some of the career things, which I'll get to at the end, and just do a little, do a little kind of talk around what blockchain is. And so blockchain, if you think about it, blockchain is really just a way to do encryption for the most part on the internet. And the reason this is such a big problem and why blockchain is so good is because think about it. So imagine things in the real world. So let's say that I make furniture and I make a very unique piece of furniture out of, out of a piece of wood and you know kind of make it all in my garage. That's a very unique piece of furniture. I'm able to give that to you and nobody else on the planet has one like that, right? It's not like they can come in. Somebody can try to come in and copy it. Somebody can try to, you know, find the same wood, use it, but it's it, it's it's going to be very unique, almost like a snowflake, right? If you really get down to the measurements and, and every piece to it, it's going to be a very unique piece of furniture. Now take that to the internet, right? If we're on the internet and it's like, hey, Thomas from thomasinson.com has made a picture of a piece of furniture for me for me to have. Very easily, what I can do on the internet is I can copy it. I can copy it a hundred times. I can copy it twenty, you know, twenty-five million times, right? Or as many times as I want, and distribute it all around. And everybody's got the same copy that you do, right? And it's hard to find out. Well, where's that? Where did the original one come? Because that's the problem with these digital, you know, with digital thing, with things in the digital world, right? It's it. How do you how do you prevent somebody from copying it? I mean, look at what happened with Napster, and you know what's going on with iTunes and everything like that, right? I mean, digital copies, digital fraud, it's, it's a huge topic, right? So where blockchain was able to come in and help is blockchain is a distributed ledger. So think of it as records. And what they do is they take these records and they distribute the records all in a decentralized way. And so it's really just decentralizing these systems and storing these records all in these distributed systems all around instead of just in one location. So think of it in a centralized location where you're storing all the records here. So think of the ledger as in, hey, a transaction, like Thomas gave you that piece of furniture in the real world, you gave the piece of furniture to another person, and then another person, and another person. But there's this list of all these transactions that happen. So it, that way, anytime you know, something, is, something is given away, there's, there's a record of it. And the record is verified not by one source, right? Think about it, one source, does that sound very safe, right? I mean, think of, you know, Think of data breaches and think of all the things that can go wrong having everything in one location. But if you have it in a distributed location where everybody knows about the transaction, everybody has to sign off on it, that gives you the ability to really, really have that encryption, right? And so that gives me, going back to our example of the picture of a piece of furniture, when I give that picture, when I give that picture to you, there's a record of that transaction, right? It's encrypted so that it can't be hacked and 
it's all you know has to be signed off on in the distributed environment and then when you give it the picture let's say that you give the picture to your best friend so your best friend now has the picture it has the transaction from me giving it to you and then also from you giving it to your friend and that continues to go on and on and on and each time that transaction happens everybody in the system has to sign off on it and that ledger and that that record is kept to it so think about the ability for me you know if that picture that I sent is encrypted, right? If, if we're using blockchain for it, we can go all the way back to that ledger and find out, okay, where did it originate, right? I mean, 25, 25 layers down is my, you know, is my transaction there. And so this gives us the ability to really combat fraud and really have better encryption um, in a digital world. And so the term blockchain, so let's just think of blockchain where that comes from. Remember when I was talking about how the ledger kind of works and how that you know each transaction is kind of encrypted and we have we have that we have that uh, log. Think of each one of those transactions as a block. So the block just continues continues to grow, and that's where the name blockchain comes from. So now for the second part of your question, okay, what does this mean for career wise? Like, are there are there options out here? What can I do from a career perspective if I want to get involved? I mean, it's I think you know for 2018 it is the number one skill that people are looking about people are talking about so what can you do to start getting involved my advice would be break down two two different areas start because it's a very new very new topic area i would look back and get really seasoned in encryption and crypt cryptography right so be, being able to understand encryption and you know just studying it in general right you know spend 30 minutes a day for 30 days on certain encryption and then you know maybe with a crypt you know, breaking down and doing more encryption and even some of the basic basic level stuff. So be strong and be under you know understand that portion of it. Also, you know, continue to learn blockchain as you're doing it, but be able to relate it back to how how it involves in encryption, right? Because that's going to be our base level. And then the second thing is understanding distributed systems. Hey, you're at the right channel, right? We talk about distributed. Uh, we talk about distributed environments all the time with Hadoop and big data and, you know, even some of the stuff that we're doing with uh, deep learning. So understanding that distributed environment and then being able to talk about encryption and understanding the base level there, that's going to make you really valuable and make you a better, you know, whether it become whether you become an administrator of blockchain, whether you become a developer, whether I mean, there's going to be jobs even, you know, from the governance perspective, too. So, you know, th those are the types of careers where I see them happening. And so you're probably saying, OK, that's great. But where are these happening right so i think blockchain is going to be one of those technologies that's going to touch all verticals but if you're saying hey thomas next you know right now or in the next six months i work on these skills where you know where where am i going to be able to find these jobs i think the two biggest industries you're going to see that they're, they're going to be the hottest are going to be finance and in healthcare right anything anything where we're trying to protect people's information Finance. Anytime there's money in money on the line, then there's you know op, you know probability for fraud, right? Those are two big areas. You know what? And I'll go ahead and throw in government too. So let's say those three areas, right? Finance, healthcare, and government. Highly regulated environments. A lot of money on the line. You know, a lot of information and a lot of privacy needs there too. Those are going to be the three industries. I think you start you know digging into some of the some of the information around blockchain getting that base level knowledge of distributed systems and um, encryption technologies too, I think you will be setting yourself up for a great career. That's all I have today for uh, Big Data Big Questions. If you have any questions, make sure you put them in the comment section below and I will see you next time on Big Data Big Questions.